and standards in those areas and helps to improve the quality. And it's not just the quality of the housing, but it's the quality of those communities as well. Because we don't just look at the housing, but we look at the environment in which the housing is located, and then we can link other things into that. And finally, just to say that um, we work on these issues across the city region. There's a housing and spatial planning board um, that looks at all of these matters. And so we work on that basis to address the various housing issues um, that we have. It also gives us an opportunity through that board to align the housing approach with the planning framework and the approach there. So that makes sure that both things work together to enable us to align those things. And finally, we link in uh, with the growth board and those people who are looking at the economic regeneration of the Liverpool city region, as well as wiggle through the growth plan that we have, to again make sure that those things are aligned. Now, it's really important just to support our economic growth, but also by building houses, that also leads to economic growth. Because for every house you build, it's equatable to about 2.4 jobs. And there's a real opportunity here, where we're building houses, whether it's with the registered providers or the private sector, to look at developing employment opportunities, apprenticeships, training, the links with the colleges, and all of those things as well. So it's an economic driver, as well as being part of the economic process within the world. I think at that point I'll so I hope they go through that too quickly, but obviously happy to answer any questions. Um, okay, uh, thank you, Lady Members. I encourage you to embrace brevity. Um, I want everyone to get an opportunity to ask a question. In addition, I want them to get an opportunity to ask a supplementary question as I want to find the most insightful. So with that said, Adam.
terms of your second question about um, the issue of building um, homes or providing homes for older people, and does that give us a hostage to fortune? Um, I think the answer to the question there is no, it doesn't, because we have those needs in Wimbledon now, and they're going to increase over the next um, few years. So we are, as a council, going to have to cater and meet those needs for those people, because there are residences, our communities. Um, that being said, of course it's not the full story, because we'll also need to build uh, new homes in line with the economic growth that we hope the world will see. And um, we uh, also need to look at the employment land that we will have as part of that. Employment land is being reviewed at the moment. Uh, again, members will be aware that very recently there's been a number of major planning applications for residential that have been approved through the planning committee uh, where there's been no demand for um, those employment sites. Those sites, many of them are sort of in the wrong place now for modern economic growth. And so what we have to do across the borough is look to reuse those sites for the uses because that helps our housing land supply. Uh, but we also have to consider whether there are new areas of the borough that we need to um, redesignate for employment purposes or to reimagine and redesign some of the existing um, employment areas that we've got. So we look at places like the World International Business Park in Rumbra, there's quite a lot of vacant land there, there's signs. The way that business now works is it isn't as dependent on large scale premises as it was past. It's now more mobile, it's digital and so on. And some of the work that Alan Evans and his team are doing around some of the growth agendas and growth sectors will be focusing on that. In terms of the affordable housing, the 285, uh, all of those will come to work. Yeah, that's right. So that money will be invested in Wales uh, to provide that number of um, units there. And the, the final um, question that you asked is the implications on, on the green belt. Um, if members recall the strategic housing market assessment and the strategic housing land availability assessment, the Schmar, the Schlar for short, I would prefer to that, it's a long winded. Um, last year we published those documents um, for public consultation. Um, that consultation ended in September last year. We've been analysing the responses to that and we um, will shortly be reporting back to Cabinet on the outcome of that consultation. Uh, that outcome will then um, lead to a number of um, potential op options and things that we'll need to be looked at and it for members to decide how um, if they want to do that in terms of future land supply and so on. So I think um, what I would say tonight is that that process is now in train and we will brief us those things uh, become clearer and um, around that and the information to that. Okay, uh, Chris. Thanks, yeah. um, Two quick questions. First one is, could you give us a council definition of an affordable home? Uh, the second question is, in my world, we're building around about 300 houses and premises. Do you feel that they're going to be affordable? Um, considering that the, the builders build what's termed as affordable houses because they can't afford to build the houses yet the builders make the profits to build the next ones. Why aren't we as a council looking at perhaps with our business head and social hot if we can bring that in house and build our own houses, <coughs> keep that portion of the of the, uh, the benefits coming from doing that.